Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning. You're listening to Contend for the Faith broadcast. This is your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. We have a wonderful lesson outlined for you today. And our subject is, For by grace are ye saved through faith. For by grace are ye saved through faith grace you'll find that text ephesians 2 8 and 9 and let me read that in your hearing for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast you again listening to continue for the faith broadcast and before we go any further let's go before the lord in prayer father we come before you in the precious name of jesus we honor you we exalt you we extol thee O god all that you did your right hallelujah your right hand had saved us we thank you for delivering us out of sin we thank you for salvation we thank you how you died for our sins on the cross thank you how you stayed up there you did not come down we thank you for the suffering we thank you for the great sacrifice father we cannot phantom hallelujah all that you sent your son to do all the suffering that he went through but we thank you that he did it in the name of jesus now hallelujah every knee will bow every tongue will confess now salvation is not in any other than the name of jesus we are on here father lord doing your will being your mouthpiece that souls will come and cry what must i do after they have given their hearts to you they want to know what more can they do lord i said this word lord jesus be so simple to them open up their hearts like you open up the heart of lydia lord holy ghost do what you do charge the atmosphere right now in the name of jesus hallelujah we can't do nothing without you hallelujah in jesus name amen Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly, we thank the Lord for another Lord's Day morning. We thank the Lord for being here with you. Always excited to greet you every, to greet you one time a week, every Sunday. So we appreciate that. We thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Uh, did a friend. You can support me by getting someone that needs to hear the word on the line. Holly, there's good good material here. Scripture-based, biblically biblical-based uh, teaching that I bring you. And I just thank the Lord for that. Highly researched, hallelujah, studied heavily so I could so that the Lord could get the glory in all that we do or say. And we in the ultimate is that it would bring fruit, hallelujah. That someone would say will will call 501-612-0271 and give their life to Jesus after they have believed in them. And Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior have accepted him that they will go down in Jesus name after they believed in the cross and they accept the gospel hallelujah hallelujah they have denied all gods and say that he is the only God for which he is then the next step your faith then their saving faith then the next step hallelujah is that you go down and be washed of your sins and we thank you that you've made that step today and you're thinking about making that step or you want to make that step we thank the lord for you holly the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that give their lives to the lord these are the last and evil days my broadcast is going to become more and more urgent because these are the last days laws are changing to fit people gods the, the gods of themselves and breaking the word of god you see the change and they're going to affect your children and your children children to come if the lord doesn't come back soon but before he come back we want souls to give their life to jesus we want you to know the whole entire truth after you believe hallelujah after you say the cross is so important after you know that you can't do anything to earn your salvation hallelujah then you must say i want to go down in jesus and be washed of all these sins the sins that i was born in and the sins that i committed against jesus myself 
And the Lord is say, I am that kind of a God. I'm here. I want to be your savior, your king, your God, your priest. I want to be your paraclete, your friend. I want to be all this to you. I want to show you, continue to show you even greater kindness and reveal into you greater things about myself, deeper depths of my love. The Lord has so much he wants to show you. Having said that, for by grace are we saved. We thank the Lord for Emmanuel Our Church Ministries. We thank the Lord for KDIV family there, Mr. Bransfield and the radio family there in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Thank you so much for your kindness. Thank you so much for working with me. I appreciate you. I appreciate the family there in Fayetteville. I appreciate my church family. I appreciate my natural family. I thank the Lord for my friends, all the support that I've gotten, and thank you. For most of all, I'm thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me a mind, keeping me with the mind to tread ahead and contend for the faith in these last days. Holly, where people are just giving up and stopping and say, you know what, if I'm going to do my thing and it feels good, but my, my heart go out and say, Lord, keep them, help them, draw them, stop them, let them know that you are a good God. And on top of that, right now, you are their, their Savior, and one day you will be their judge. Paul said in the scriptures that it is with the persuasion, the terror, and the, uh, of, uh, and the, the urgency that we preach the gospel because we know, hallelujah, the, 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 how it is to, be, to, to fall in, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands. He didn't say that part, but it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands hands of the living God. So you don't want to fall in the hands of Jesus. And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, it, I, I'm not afraid of anything. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about dying. Well, I want you to be concerned about dying because after the death, this is the judgment and you will have to meet Jesus and I want you to meet him in peace. And I don't want you to be tricked. And you know, you might be tough, and you might be, you know, suave or you might have it together and, you know, everyone think you, you know, fearless and this, 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 and you're a rock to the family and you're a rock to your friends. But in actuality, there's the, the Jesus has built in us, in our soul to long for him. Your friends might think you don't need nothing. Your mom and dad might be impressed about your emotional constitution, how strong you are, how solid you are, how firm you are, how a go-getter you are. But in the, in the heart, Jesus put down in your soul a need for him. Now, you can put it with all these other things, but ultimately that need is for him and except he can only feel that need and if he does not feel that need uh the the, the day of judgment is not going to be uh, pleasant for you so take care of yourself we've been taught that all our lives take care of your physical body take care of your monetary uh, means take care of your emotional health i'm here to do, to tell you Take care of your relationship with Jesus because everybody's calling a lot of stuff spiritual nine days. I'm saying take care of your emotional, emotional being, your spiritual being, <laughs> your physical being. Hallelujah. This flesh goes back to the dust. Okay. <laughs> Money is going to stay in the bank after we pass. All right. For our family to sort out whatever. <laughs> the house is going to go. The Royal Wars is going to go to somebody. But one thing, our soul is going to go back to, to the one that, that, uh, that created it. And he's going to decide where it should go. That's going to be totally out of your hands. Right now, your soul is in your hands. You have the authority. You have the will. Jesus gave us a will. Hallelujah. To serve him. He gave us a conscious Amen. He was, we were made in his image. I didn't mean to go this way, but we were made in his image. We have a toy. We have a, a will to choose what we want to do. And that is so powerful. Your soul is so powerful. Hallelujah. Your power to choose so powerful. And Jesus, leave that ultimately up to you. So when I get on here, I want, I'm contending for the faith that was once uh, delivered by the apostles and the 
and the foundation being Jesus Christ himself, I get on to encourage you to accept Jesus uh, by faith. And then once you accept him, to be washed of your sins in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's just that simple. Uh, if you're struggling in sin, the Lord will give you the Holy Ghost to help you. It will be your paraclete to walk alongside you to as you grow in the Lord and as you seek Him and as you uh, put on more of Him through the Word and through prayer and being around church, strong church members that's walking that faith, that true faith walk. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. The Lord will lead you and guide you. And it's just that simple. Okay, heaven said that we're going to run through this lesson. I had to get that out for some reason. I really believe someone needed to be ministered to first. Now we're going to do the lesson. Grace is under um, is understood as the kindness of God. It is the undeserved kindness actually of God while mercy is holding back the wrath we deserve grace is the extension of the goodness to those who in no way ought to receive it again grace is the undeserved kindness of God while mercy is holding back the wrath we deserve grace is the extension of the goodness to those who in no way ought to receive it. Now, according to Ephesians 2, uh, 1 and 3, man is spiritually dead, living under um, the sways of evil and the impulse of this filthy, lustful flesh. You might say it was a mistake. We, this, this led to another and before I knew it. We were in a, this situation, and before I knew it, I was driving here to do this and that and that. But the scriptures let in, so it was her fault or their fault or this fault or, you know, if they wouldn't have done that or they wouldn't have wore that, they'd look so provocative or if I wouldn't have drank that. But they let scriptures let us know uh, that we are drawn away with our own lust so that we can't blame nobody but our own soul to do what we do. But the grace of Jesus Christ... When it touches our hearts, we see ourselves as total unfit sinner, a lost soul in need of salvation. So grace comes to show you who you are, to show you that mirror. You look into that mirror and you see, I don't want to be like this, Jesus. I want to look in the mirror and see me striving to be like you. I look in the mirror and see a new creature. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. That's what I want to look in the morning or the spiritual mirror or the, the physical mirror. I don't want to see that person that I don't like and I'm carrying another face. Everyone think I'm just wonderful, but in, the, in my soul, I'm dying. So... The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it comes to touch our heart, to show us where we are. A person's faith is, an, is very instrumental in salvation. Again, a person's faith is instrumental in their salvation. Transformation in Jesus is based on his power and not yours. It's not based on my power. Transformation totally is based on Jesus. The truth is found in his sacrifice. It's nothing we did, any part of that redemption plan that God already set out in the Garden of Eden when Adam had failed. He had already put in course before that even happened because he's God. He already put in course how he was going to redeem man. Every dispensation, every dispensation, God always had a plan to redeem man. Now, in this last dispensation, if you know about the dispensations, there's seven, etc., etc., and some say it's eight, but we're just going to stick with what the majority is saying. <laughs> this seven dispensation, this dispensation we're in is the dispensation of grace. Okay, the dispensation of grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ. He instituted, God had already put in place about being washed of our sins. Had one, all you have to do is believe in Jesus and that faith alone 
after you believe in Jesus, you are to be washed of your sins in the name of Jesus. If anyone in Christ, he is a new creature. And that's the purpose of that new birth that uh, Jesus talks to Nicodemus about. And St. John, you've heard me say it over and over. St. John 3 and that verses 3 through 6. He talked to, just came straight out and say, except a man was born again of water and spirit, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. He just said it straight out. So... Um, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. That means to be born again, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, to be renewed. And that's after you've believed in him. That's after you believed in the cross. You've accepted the gospel. So the next step, your faith, we're saved by faith through grace. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus. And I explained before time what grace was. So by this grace, this newfound faith results in baptism and then filling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost is used interchangeably. We say the Holy Ghost more because in the new trans in the in the translation of the King James Version, um from uh, from Greek uh, to the uh, to 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 English, uh, they it was always the Holy Ghost. You never rarely saw the the, uh, the word Holy Spirit, so it's used interchangeably. But as new versions begin to emerge, though they use the word Holy Spirit more, so they use interchangeably. They mean the same thing. Okay, Jesus, according to St. John 14, 26, told the disciples, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. He is going to teach you all things. He's going to lead you. And that same Holy Ghost failed on the day of Pentecost that Jesus is talking about in St. John, the 14th chapter. I want to talk about that without faith, there is no salvation. Having said this, repentance is the first sign of of this newly given faith that the Lord gives the believer. On the day of Pentecost, when they heard what Peter had to say about Jesus and what they had did, they had sinned against him and killed him and murdered him. And we have done just as worse things to Jesus in our lifestyle. I mean, our, 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 our living in sin is an enmity, an enemy. We are in God's enemy. When we are not uh, serving him as our God, but we're serving other gods. So they said, what must we do to be saved? And that's what I want you to ask that same question. What must I do? Why? I, 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 I want to be saved. I want this grace. Peter said, repent. We have nothing to give him. Faith is all we have. Faith is the next thing to give Jesus. Faith is something God gives us due to the new life that makes us alive through the baptism in Jesus' name and then filling of the Holy Ghost. Faith is so powerful. <laughs> without faith, Hebrews let us know, it is impossible to please him without faith. You have to come knowing that he can do what he can do. You have to come knowing that he is God. You have to come knowing he is that God that died on the cross for your sins. You have to come knowing I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Only through faith in Jesus, we start to see and respond to him and even to others. Jesus helped me see my sins. I didn't like them. He's helped me saw what was in me. He helped me to see them even daily. I bring them to him. I don't like what I see at times. Um, and I'm sure you don't neither. But Jesus is there to be that helper, that paraclete, that advocate. Then seeing, when you see when you're, when you're out there, and I've already given my life to Christ, now it's your time. When you're out there doing what you're doing, the Lord will show who you are. He will show you yourself. So it, that, and then his general goodness is for everyone. And you can't lean on the general goodness of the Lord and say, this is, this is fine. He's always blessing me. He's doing this for me. And he will. He'll do wonderful things for you. But you just can't rest on that alone because he ran on the just and the unjust. 
Yes, definitely. He reigned on the just and the unjust. That is the kind of God he is. Jesus is just that kind of God. He helped those in need. He helped the rich. He helped the poor. We can't orchestrate and tell him what to do. <laughs> he healed this person while that person might die. We can't, all we know is that he's God, Jesus is God, and whatever he's do, he does, his wisdom is yes, his wisdom, he knows the end from the beginning. So faith is something that the Lord gives us as we come to this new life in him, and we are regenerated through the water and the blood and the, and the, and the Holy Spirit, we are made alive in him. So salvation is not from you. You can't save yourself. Okay, if we at all thought that we could awaken ourselves from the dead, then this, then we would, you know, after we die, we can wake ourselves up, but we can't. Those people in the graveyard can put a alarm clock there. They can't wake themselves up. <laughs> but the Lord wakes us up every day to make a decision to follow him and make a decision to walk with him, commune with him and make a decision when you're not saved to accept him by faith. It is a gift for the Lord. It's no nothing that we can boast, no works that we can do of our own. So decide the truth that the Lord has expressed over and over in his word is that the Lord takes the burden off us. Uh, and yes, he bear our burdens, whatever they may be. And so the Lord want you to know that when you approach him, come to him and like, Lord, you know, I need you as my savior. I want to accept you as my God. You've got mail. My, my, uh, my everything. So that's what the Lord is waiting on today. By grace are you saved. It is a gift from God. The apostle continued to describe the characteristic of salvation, the attributes of the positiveness, the grace through faith is a gift of God. It is freely given with the hope of bringing great blessing to our lives. <laughs> salvation is not of ourselves. It comes from God. Only the Lord Jesus can bring wonderful, wonderful revelations, wonderful life. It, it helps our health. It overflows into the lives of our children. We become better citizens in society. We no longer do this and that and that. When we really have come, became into the knowledge and the truth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our salvations, our hope of salvation, all wrapped up in Jesus. So salvation is a gift from God. It is not the result of good works. Yes, man's stubborn pride uh, may make him think that, you know, he has done great things. He has accomplished great things. He fed people. He built schools. But man will never enter the gates of heaven by thinking well of himself. Salvation is not the results of good works. Paul is setting up a framework for which God, for, by which God glory, by which we glorify God, and we adore him and we worship Him and we lift them up. It has nothing to do with us being delivered from sin. That's what's on God's part. So we cannot do our works thinking that our works, you know, what we give, what we do, what we help help build homes. It's good to have good works, but, you know, we cannot think that our pride, our selfish pride, look, Lord, look what I've done. We can't think that that's going to save us. It's good to have works. It's clearly a place for it, but not in the form, not in the process of saving your soul to repenting and being washed from sin. That has nothing to do with works. That's all on Jesus. But it's good to have good works, that's a, but that's not the place for it right here in the salvation process. When you're giving your life and repenting and giving your soul to Jesus to clean it up and to regenerate it. And uh, so you can become a son of God. So Jesus commanded all souls to repent of their sins and to accept the gospel. Yes, the new birth. And this new birth comes with being born of water and spirit in the name of Jesus. Regeneration through water baptism and in filling of the Holy Ghost is from God. We live in a society now 
People think they can save themselves by good works, by being kind, humanism, great philosophy, karma, you name it. But salvation is of God. <laughs> he, the one instituted baptism, he's the one that said Jesus must go to the cross and suffer to redeem you from your sin because it should have been you and I on that cross. Amen. So in the new covenant, Jesus remits our sins. God has planned for the salvation to be reveal a better covenant through his blood. The new covenant, this new covenant is a better covenant. Hallelujah. And it's through his blood. So let us take a full bow and recognize that we are sinners deserving the worst. But Jesus died for our sins and gave us his best. For God, St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation is from God. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift. And this is a gift that keep giving. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Thank you. Now I can be baptized, washed of my sins, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I can walk in the newness of life. I can put him on through baptism. Hallelujah. I did not know that I was such a sinner until you showed me. Grace let me see what was in me. Grace let me see. Thank you for your grace, Jesus. You've been listening to Continue for the Faith broadcast. This has been your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. 